So here we are, the British Shooting Show 2016. I thought I'd do something a little bit different this year because, to be honest, every year with the SHOT Show in the States and the British Shooting Show here, all YouTubers sort of do lots of little snippets and the audio is always really crap and you can't really get a close enough look at what you want to see. So I thought I'd do a bit of a voiceover, so, you know, give you an idea really. Um, loads of knives for sale. I actually bought a sort of machete um, which is, I'm going to use for sort of clearing scrub when I'm ferreting or when I'm pigeon shooting. You can see it there, actually. The guy kept going on about how it was featured in the uh, Walking Dead for you know, killing zombies, so I guess it's good for that too. Um, you can see here the pricing as well on the food is so expensive. It's really important to, if you can to take a, a packed lunch of some sort because, to be honest, you know, you'll end up spending half your money just on food, which is, you know, you don't want to do that really, to be honest. Uh, loads of guns for sale, as you can see. I was actually really tempted by a CZ243, uh, which you can see in a moment next to that Browning, and that was a really good price, like 425. And uh, I was tempted, but the only thing that put me off was it wasn't cut for a moderator, which is a bit of a, a deal breaker, to be honest, because I'd have to spend probably 100 quid getting it cut for a moderator if I bought it. But that is something I want to get into before too long, so I can do some long range big bore shooting but also shooting deer and foxes and that sort of thing. And it'll be good for you guys too, you know, you can sort of see how I'm getting on with that, you know, you might want to see that. Um, and this stand here, you can see they've got uh, straight pull big bore rifles. You don't see that a lot these days, which might be why they were so expensive, but uh, yeah, interesting to see. These are combination guns. I don't know if any of you guys shoot combination guns. I'm always interested in you know how you go about that because you've got a side-by-side -side shotgun effectively with a with a rifle barrel underneath you know how practical really is that in terms of accuracy and that sort of thing so if any of you guys know you know let me know uh, whether you think it's worth maybe trying one out you can see pigeon mania there I bought some uh, poles actually so I can set up another hide I'd, I've already got a net um, but we have the capability now when we're out pigeon shooting to set up another hide because sometimes you know you see pigeons coming in on the flight line from the other side of the field and you obviously can't get to them if me and Tom get two hides set up hopefully we can keep the birds moving and we'll get bigger bags but we shall see keep your eye out for that I may even be able to get out on Sunday actually at the pig farm so uh, yeah I'll have to see what happens with that these are novelty loose seats Callum English shooting I think took a photo of one of these I was very tempted to buy one but my missus wasn't impressed unfortunately so <laughs> that was out this is the Browning stand um, a little bit too expensive for my money at the moment these are all the new 75s but the engraving was incredible if you look at the engraving on that one there um, considering that's done in you know on a machine effectively at the Maruku factory that's you know it's really impressive very very pretty and it's got a bit of a lower profile than the 525 so it's tempting but I don't really need one so yeah yeah I'm probably gonna avoid that but you know my girlfriend or Tom's girlfriend may buy one in 20 ball and in fact I've borrowed Laura's um, over and under in 20 ball recently because I'm going to be doing a video on that and I've already shot half of it I'm just waiting for Tom to get out so we can do the second part we've got all the targets made up so keep her out for that because that's going to be a really really good video um, as I said it's just taking a bit of time to get everything together but it's coming very very soon um, you can see here this is I'm not sure what stand this is actually uh, I don't know but uh, yeah nice rifles <laughs> in fact no is that Browning oh yeah I think that's an A-bolt actually yeah, so, um, yeah, it was quite affordable, actually, that A-Bolt. It was like 500 quid new. And I didn't know that. I thought the A-Bolt was um, replaced by the X-Bolt. I didn't realise you could still buy them. I'm not quite sure why the X-Bolt's any better, really, but there you go. This, this stand was interesting. Um, this is a new company. They've come out in 2011. And you can see the engraving style on a lot of their guns. It's like a sort of Celtic style, so it's quite unusual. But very pretty wood and very, very light and well-balanced guns. Apparently the barrels are all made out of one piece of metal as well, which is quite interesting. This is the Bonham stand. Uh, as you can see, uh, what look like really expensive guns. I mean, those are break-open rifles. Actually, they're not as expensive as you might think. They're about £5,000, which is obviously expensive, but for Bonhams, it's not that bad. And you can see that one's got like a bit of antler at the end of the stock. So it's very, very pretty sort of antique firearms. And considering... You know, I don't think I saw a gun for more than five thousand pounds. So really, 
you know, it's, it's quite, yeah, it's quite reasonably priced to be honest. Um, as you can see, coming up in a moment here, yeah, that's the, as I said, that's closer on the machete that I got. Everybody I saw kept, well, not everybody, but several people said, oh, what have you got that for? Is that to keep your missus in line? And I was like, right, okay, it seems to be a bit of a, a tired joke by the end of the day. Uh, these are the long range guys, uh, 50 BMGs, 338 Lampur, that sort of thing. That's something I'd really quite like to get into, but it's bloody expensive, to be honest. That's a, LBR long barrel revolver 357 Magnum and you can see up on the left in a moment there's a CSG 1911 long barrel pistol which is what Callum English Shootings just bought and it was really light really well balanced to be honest it was much lighter than the Buck, Browning Buckmark offering or the, the Ruger offering so I would say it was definitely worth looking at these guys have got loads of old Lienfields like Lienfield snipers and that sort of thing Tom was tempted on looking at one of their scopes because he wants to get, to get one for his 1909 Mark I um, but yeah I mean it was quite expensive to be honest ammo loads of ammo available not particularly cheap and nothing particularly exotic we're hoping to see if we can get some double or buckshot again but uh, none around unfortunately again loads of knives now it's important to be careful with knives at a show like this because you can easily think that you're buying something really nice and get it home and realise you've been sold a bit of old tat really so be mindful of that. This stand was interesting. This guy got loads of old deactivated machine guns and uh, small arms and uh, he like nickel plates them and brass plates them, that sort of thing. There's even a, a Desert Eagle that he had done as well, which you'll see just coming up uh, here. Oh, well, here in a moment. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It makes you realise how heavy the deactivation is in the UK though, as Desert Eagle. Um, although the Desert Eagle wasn't too bad, it was just a block barrel. All of these small arms you can see in front of you here, they've actually got the bolts like sealed shut, like welded shut. So there's no way they could ever be converted to real firearms, which makes you wonder what the, the EU's going on about really at the moment, because honest to God, those things are just paperweights. This is the air gun arena. You can see that they've got an air gun stand up. There was the new, I think it's the Six Sauer MCX, which is like a semi automatic air rifle. Um, looks really cool but unfortunately the problem with it is of course it's um it's only like two foot pounds of energy so you kind of like what's the point really to be honest that's the rimfire range my girlfriend had a go with that last year but to be honest it's so expensive i mean they charge you like a tenner for like 20 shots or something so it's extortionate so we didn't bother uh this year but certainly you know if you've never had a go with a semi-automatic rimfire before or something like that you know it's worth maybe having having a look at and you can see next door to it, this is like the Airsoft Arena. Our next door neighbour, which is why we were there, was actually running that. I mean, not my sort of thing really, but you know, looks good fun if you're into that sort of thing. Here you can just see an overview of um, the Airgun Arena. You can see my girlfriend looking a bit bored, asking what I'm doing. Um, this is BSA, um, R10s and Scorpions and all that sort of thing, what you'd sort of usual fare to be honest, you know, you've seen it all before, if you go next year it'll be there again. And you can see here some antique, this is quite interesting, some antique BSAs, and uh, they're all about £250, so they hold their value very well, and my dad says my uncle's apparently got one that when they were children they found it under a tree, and he keeps saying he's going to get it for me, but he didn't, well, it hasn't sort of transpired yet unfortunately. I think we're coming up now to the yeah, Passed On Young Sports. I know one of my subscribers, Tim, actually asked me to pop in and see them, but I didn't get the message till I'd got home, so that was that, unfortunately. Sorry, Tim. That's the uh, pigeon shooting demo. Again, it's there every year, so once you've seen it, you know, you've seen it, haven't you, really? <laughs> but it was a good show, you know. As I said, it is like Merry Hill for shooters, really, but it was good fun. These are the, uh, this is the British Army, some infantrymen. I'm not sure what regiment they were, but I think they're a bit bored to be honest. So they were sort of pleased to have a chat and really friendly and very helpful. That's the new L85 um, with the sort of latest spec. That's the LSW, which is like the same thing, but you know, it was a machine gun. I'm not even sure what that is, but whatever it is, it weighs a ton. I said to the guys, you know, what is this, like 20 pounds or something? And they're like, no, it's 12 pounds, which is a bit embarrassing. But I can't believe those guys have to carry that into combat like all day because it's so, so heavy. I mean, just trying to shoulder it was, you know, it was a real issue. And, you know, I work out as well. It's not like I'm weak, but God, it was heavy. 
This lad here, he's done one tour of duty now. I think he's been to Afghanistan and he was telling me about the, the weapon system. And it was really interesting actually because he said they won't be replacing the uh, L85 anytime soon because they've done so much work on it. But it's got a new scope now and as you can see it's got an extra optic on the top. It's like a sort of glass red dot on the top as he's pointing to there. And what you're supposed to do is he's just about to show me is when you're going in a close quarters combat situation you put the stock almost into the middle of your chest or to the right of your chest and then lean forward and look over the scope like that that's it like that and uh, it allows you to obviously clear rooms and that sort of thing and it's interesting because you see all these gun channels in the United States like James Jaeger and all these other people and they never tell you stuff like this and uh, so it just goes to show that sometimes you need to talk to someone who's actually been in combat and actually knows really what they're talking about to get the sort of right information but it was surprisingly comfortable it doesn't sound comfortable but it actually was and I can see why it works now so it's very interesting anyway so there we are I hope you enjoyed that like and subscribe.